Hey everybody, so today I want to talk about a very important topic that faces all photographers at one point or another in their career and many of you do not even realize it or you mistake this issue for something else and that is setting, communicating and managing client expectations. Let's do it. Now, before I speak about client expectations, we have to establish quickly what it means to have an actual brand of photography. And I'm not talking about your logo or your website decor. I'm talking about when photographers start out, they're excited to shoot everything and anything. From kids to pets to people, parties, events, weddings, you name it and they shoot it. And this is because you know they're still building traction, trying to earn some money and perhaps don't really know where they want to focus as of yet, nothing wrong with any of that, and I too at one point experimented over the years with different types of photography. But at some point, and this may be a few years of being in business at a full-time capacity, you're going to end up zeroing in on your true focus and hopefully dropping off the other things that you were once happy to shoot, realizing it's much better for the client to let another photographer who does have a specific focus, have that client and fulfill their expectations. And this is also a pretty good networking opportunity among photographers uh, as well. Myself, quickly as an example, when I get inquiries for young children or maternity, smaller events, things like that, I have a network of people in place where I send that business to as it's truly not my focus and I don't have a framework set up to support it, right? At the same time, Again, after being in business for a few years, your photographic style will change and hopefully evolve. You're gonna attend workshops and school and, and videos and learn new techniques on lighting and, and processing if that's your thing. Whatever it is, you're gonna get better and better the more that you shoot and the more that you work at your business. The analogy that I came up with um, is based in aviation because I'm a big uh, airplane guy. Uh, this is exactly like a commercial airliner when it takes off. On the initial climb to 10,000 feet, the plane is gaining altitude at the most rapid rate. This is exactly like your photography business in the beginning. You're hitting the ground running and doing everything you can to stay in the air at all costs, no matter what. Once that airliner hits 10,000 feet, it temporarily levels off, whether you know it or not, checks in with center, which is air traffic control, and it then gets authorization to continue climbing to its planned cruising flight level, which may be 30,000 feet or more. This secondary climb happens at a much slower rate until it's finally at the cruising altitude. This is like after that first few years of being in business, you realize what's working and what's not. You're further along in developing your style and you have a much clearer focus on where you're headed. You know, and once you're higher up in the sky, the changes to your business happen at a much slower rate because you're more stabilized. And at this point, your offerings and your, and your, and your images you know, have volume. You know, it shows some real repeatable experience and it has a very consistent look and feel all throughout. Your business sense has sharpened and you too now even have some expectations of the people that surround you, including your own clients. Now, congratulations, you have a real brand and a real business. So now the point of the video kind of starts here. So clients, the people that make your financial world go around, all start off with looking at your website and your portfolio of work to see what you do and to understand what your style is. And most importantly, what they can expect from you. The psychological aspects of the photography buying process is very, very interesting. First of all, clients see images on your site and they, to a point, envision themselves in the shots and in most cases are relating with something within the imagery that draws them in. It's really important to understand that photography, unlike anything else, it's not a logically based sale. This is an emotionally driven one. So people have to connect with the images in some way and also with you as the photographer personally. 
And this, by the way, is how you find your best target clients. If you've done everything else right in regards to your branding, the people that hire you will appreciate you, they'll appreciate your work, your style, and are excited to work with you. It's much better for your business to take on less volume and fill your calendar with these types of clients versus trying to be everything to everyone all the time. This is gonna make your career as a photographer much more fulfilling, trust me. Now, in the art of managing client expectations, this is where photography ends and business starts. So, put away your photography hats for a few seconds and let's walk through the emotional aspects from the client's perspective. If you've done a good job communicating with your client during the consultation, you should have uncovered exactly why they love you and your work. And what I mean is that you should know specifically what it is about the results that you show that they love. Was it a specific shoot? Was it a specific blog post from a wedding that I did a few years ago and now they're gonna be getting married there too? What was it? You need to know this. If you don't, then you've already failed at managing your client's expectations. Look, the reality is this, that all of your clients have an expectation of the results that you're gonna send them. You need to uncover what that expectation is during the meeting and ensure that number one, the expectation is based on your work and not that of general photography or a list, or a list of must-have shots from Pinterest or something that's been taken from a mix of other photographers' websites. Number two, clients fully need to understand what it is that you're gonna be giving them. And I mean breaking this stuff down, play by play, and being totally open and honest. They need to understand what your business structure really is. I mean, are you showing a website that is highly polished with Photoshopped images, but you don't actually you know, do those edits to all the shots that you give your clients? So what do the normal pictures look like? The ones that haven't been processed and Photoshopped? You know, what, what are the ones that I'm gonna receive in volume gonna look like? Do I have to, you know, do I as a client have to buy more services from you after the fact? Maybe edited shots are only a part of an album order, you know, and then that's another expense that I have to take into account. You know, do you as the photographer offer different packages based on time? And if so, what can I as a client expect my wedding to look like if I book the lowest package? I mean, I have to assume uh, that your website is filled with images of all types of weddings and many of those may be the result of a full day or more. So if I'm falling in love, understandably, with images on your site and the collective story from a full day package, this may be very disappointing to me when I see my results from my wedding or session if I book you for less time. You know, do you give your clients high resolution images? Are there any restrictions? If you don't over communicate all this stuff, clients are gonna be left to assume things in their favor. So it's not the responsibility of the client to ask this stuff. They don't know, they're not photographers. It's your responsibility as a reputable professional business owner to communicate with your clients and this has nothing to do with photography. Okay, so I'm gonna share with you my own learning experience and where I'm coming from. We all go through this stuff like I said. So here was my aha moment about four years ago. Uh, I had just delivered a wedding. It was one that happened in my off season during the very hot months here in South Florida. Um, they, the clients were from out of town and they just had a very basic wedding. They told me that they didn't need a full day uh, and that they wanted something along the lines of like six hours of coverage and they were on a very tight budget. I looked at my calendar. I had nothing going on at all that whole week uh, and with the reduction of time, I had an ethical way to reduce my price point to accommodate. Uh, so I did, and I figured this would be an easy win. I was totally wrong. Now, like every other wedding that I have done up to this point, the client told me when they wanted me to start coverage, and I was there at that time for the six hours. After all, it's not my responsibility as a photographer to manage their day or to become a wedding planner of sorts. Well, so I thought, more on that in just a second. Um, this was a simple traditional wedding, that was, which means that there was no first look, so they didn't see each other, the bride and groom before the ceremony at all. Uh, and of course, like most weddings, there was some delays that happened during the getting ready 
uh, portion with hair and makeup, and this did actually cause the ceremony to start a little bit late. Then, after the ceremony, we went to go set up for the formal shots to do all the family pictures, and we look at the clock, and we had exactly four, maybe five minutes to do 30 or 40 minutes worth of pictures. It just wasn't going to happen. So we did the best we could, but we had, to, we had to pack up, and we had to drive back to the reception at this point. And the church had a mass coming in behind the wedding, so we really had to get out of there. So this basically meant that not many, maybe just one or two images were actually taken of the bride and groom alone together in the church. And then we had to go. It was very rushed and it was very stressful. It was, a, it, was a, it was a chaotic situation for everybody. And I had told them that, you know, when we get to the venue, we can try to do some shots maybe later on and we just have to kind of, it's just gonna depend on time and see how things go. So off we went to the venue and we started setting up for the reception, doing all the detail shots of the room and decor and all that good stuff. Uh, and we only had a few minutes to even do all of that before the guests started to come into the room and then it was time for the introductions to start and then the first dances, and then the images of people dancing, and then it was time to go. The, the six hour day was over in a blink of an eye, and then it came time for us to say goodbye. The clients were now in party mode, and they had several drinks, uh, and that's really the end of any effective picture taking at any wedding. When the images were delivered to the clients, the disappointment set in, and then the dreaded email came to me asking if there were more images of the two of them and that they felt that they didn't get enough and they didn't understand and they commented on how the other images on my site were much better or more to the point there was more content and like in all the blog posts and things and here I sat thinking this is not my fault at all after all I did you the favor of only shooting for six hours because you were on a tight budget uh, I didn't plan your wedding I didn't make the hair and makeup people uh, late and, and or cause them to get become distracted while they were working and cause a delay for everybody else getting ready. Uh, I didn't know there was going to be a mass after the ceremony. And it wasn't my fault that we had to drive 45 minutes to get to the venue after the church. And much time was wasted all throughout the day. At the end of the day, I did exactly what you as the client had asked me to do and did the best that I could with the situation that I that I had in front of me. Um, and that's all I could do at any wedding. So how in the world would this have been my fault? Right, so that's what was going through my head and that's what I was thinking. But it was my fault. It was definitely my fault. The mistake that I made was that I didn't over communicate with my client based upon expectation. I allowed them to formulate expectations of their own from my work that was based on a much different and favorable situations on my website. I took the all too common hands off approach and just stuck to my role as a photographer, showed up, did my thing and off I went. Now to be clear, this is what most all photographers do. They don't want to get too involved with any extra planning because that's not what their role is. They're not being paid for that type of responsibility. Every photographer gets into this situation at one point or another, and most of them just spin it off as, oh, I have the worst clients, right? And <laughs> we've, all, we've all thought that at one point or another. And next time it will be better, thinking that different people will render a, a better result. And this is very much the wrong mindset to have. And I have to think now, looking back years ago, this has had to have been one of the most destructive things that anyone could have happen in their business. You know, don't ever blame the client for your shortcomings as a business owner and your own ill communication. So the real lesson learned here is that you can't allow a client or even a wedding planner, a mom, a dad, or another friend of theirs that just got married, anyone, tell you as the person your client has hired to make a very specific result, which is based on a very specific expectation, how much time they need or don't need on the wedding day. You, as a professional photographer, business owner, and trusted advisor to your clients, need to sit down and clearly walk through the day with them and explain what is possible 
and what is not so that everything they see and think will happen will. And if it won't, then they know this before the wedding day. Going back after the fact and saying, well, you know, you didn't buy enough time or, you know, we don't plan your wedding. That's not my problem. You didn't have a wedding planner. Uh, all of that stuff does not matter. No one cares except for you, the photographer. True or not, it makes no difference. If they are unhappy, you're going to be unhappy as well. And that's the bottom line. They are going to write bad reviews. They're going to go talk to their friends. You're not going to have the traction that you should from that wedding. And this in time will take down your business. So uh, what changes did I make and what do I do now? I'll tell you right now. I take a very simple and direct approach to the wedding day. And this is what works for me personally on many different levels. Okay. Number one, I don't offer little packages based on time for the wedding day. Uh, I've never liked that concept. It provokes missed expectations and above all, I really want to be my personal best on the wedding day and to be able to honestly and confidently tell my clients that they have the same opportunity that any other wedding that I've shot has for best results. And this allows me to live inside of a business where results are now consistent from one wedding to the next and that makes me personally very happy and I like that very much as I get to now work in a low stress situation that where I can actually be my best. It's a full day and it's limited to 12 consecutive hours and now if you offer time-based packages uh, that's totally fine. Do whatever works for you. You know you just have a little bit more work to do in terms of communicating and going over the expectations with your clients because you really need to show those differences to them so they understand what, what, they, what they are going to get and what they're not going to get. Now, if some photographers out there may be shaking their heads saying, well, you're giving away all your time, you have no upsell, and you, know, you have no way to accommodate different people's needs. Well, with more experience comes a new perspective. Uh, first of all, I figured out long ago what my time is actually worth based on my own lifestyle, expenses, and goals. And I simply charge that amount of money, plain and simple. So there's no need for me to play games with clients and create ways to not fully adhere to what they may expect of me based on what they're seeing on my own website and blog. At the same time, me trying to be everything to everyone all the time is never a good idea. I mean, let's take a look at the past for a second. Do you think now that I'm going to be a good fit for that quick budget focused wedding from out of town looking for six hours of coverage and at the same time holding me accountable to all the content on my website and blog thinking that that's what's going to be delivered? No way. That's not a client. That's a liability. This is going to take me down and not up. It's way better for me in that situation to then network with other photographers that are perhaps just starting out or don't have the same business sense as I and send them that direction. This is just like a fine dining restaurant. You know, they're not looking for a fast food McDonald's customer, nor is a Range Rover dealership looking to speak with anyone that's, you know, shopping for a Ford. Look, I'm not saying that I'm the most expensive photographer, far from it actually, and that creates an amazing value. However, the experience, direction, and control that I exhibit inside of my business requires the client to understand and appreciate what my brand is all about. And it's this mindset for me personally that not only sets me apart from the masses, but it yields a much more satisfied client experience. And that's what it's about. So the other thing that I do to manage clients' expectations is I create a photography master plan. And this you can call a timeline if you want, but in any case, before every wedding, I seek out all the details for the big day logistically. This is all done at least a month beforehand and before anybody else, like a wedding planner, does any final planning because they like to plan things much closer to the event. I find out all the details, the hotels, the locations, the church, the drive times, all of the logistics are captured and then I sit back and I crunch all the numbers on my end and then I spit out this clean, organized day of timetable that clearly walks them through every part of the photography process. And I'm talking about getting ready, 
straight through to the end of the reception. They know when they need to be camera ready. They know when the hair and makeup artist needs to be done. They know when bridesmaids need to be ready. When I'm setting up for things and I'm not available. And in general, just when everybody needs to be camera ready. This is huge, right? This <clears throat> takes into account my style and my workflow that the client has paid for and further expects. This is the tool that I use to facilitate my expectations to them so that I in turn can then deliver their expectations of me. This all becomes a two-way street in a real relationship. My clients must trust me and understand that I know how to fly the plane safely. Once they do, they can sit down, buckle up, and let me take the flight controls as I'm gonna take you to where you wanna go. I will assure you and everyone else that there is no one else in that wedding plane that is gonna be in a better position to educate and communicate what is needed for the smoothest flight when the expected destination is great photography. So it only makes sense that I'm the pilot. A wedding planner can be a co-pilot, but we must be on the same flight plan and vectoring to the same place. So that when the plane lands and the door opens, the client smiles and sees all the beautiful pictures. Because once that day is over and everyone's back on the plane home, the only thing anyone's going to actually have are the images and video that have been taken. That's it. And that's why all of this is so important and why I do what I do, because that will stay with you for the rest of your life. And everything else quickly fades from your memory. By me communicating and facilitating the photo master plan, it means that every wedding I shoot can be consistent, whether they have a wedding planner or not. And if they do have a wedding planner, it makes their job very, very easy because they can now clearly see what we need to do, and in most cases becomes a copy and paste, right? And all of this leads to the client being happy and getting the most of what we've been hired to do and what we're capable of. This is what makes good business. And this is what it's all about. All right, guys, that's it for now. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, sit down talk with me on client expectations. If you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to drop them in the comment field below and I will respond to them. Until next time. <laughs>